So we just looked at radical expressions. Now let's take a look at rational exponents and how the two relate together. So the first thing I want you to know is that if you have the nth, nth root of a, that is the same thing as writing a to the 1 over n power. So if I wanted to take something like 100 to the 1 half power, and I need to figure out what that is, we can rewrite that as the square root, or really just like that, of 100, which you should know would be 10. Or if I had negative 64 to the 1 third power, that's like the cube root of negative 64, which would give us negative 4. Or one more, let's take a look. If I had 2xy to the third power, and that's all to the one third power, and I wanted to simplify that, we would say that is the cube root of 2xy to the third. And one of those, the cube root of y cubed is y to the 2x. So if you have fraction powers where it's 1 over a number, you can rewrite it as the nth root of that value. Now another thing that you can do with that is if you have the seventh root of let's say x, y to the third. You could also rewrite that as a fraction power, x, y to the third to the one seventh power. So you can go both directions with that. The next rule you have that goes along with those is if I have a to the m over n, that is going to be the same thing as we have the nth root of a to the m power. And you can also do that problem like the nth root of a all to the m power. So what it's saying is if you have a rational expression in the power, the top number is still the power, the bottom number can be written as the root. So what happens is you can end up simplifying expressions like this. 125 to the 2 thirds power. And you can say that is the cube root of 125 all to the second power. Well, we know the cube root of 125 is 5, and then we still have the second power, and 5 squared would become 25. So we have that number simplified. Let's take a look at a couple more of those. So if I have negative 32 to the 3 fifths, I'm going to always take my bottom number first. It's going to be a lot easier to make the number smaller by taking the root first and then increasing the power. Okay, I had to fix that 5. I accidentally wrote a 5, it's really a 2. So the fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. And then negative 2 cubed would become negative 8. Alright, so let's say that we have 9 to the negative 1 half power. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to go the square root of 9 and then we will take that to the negative 1 power. So the square root of 9 is 3, and we've got 3 to the negative 1. And then remember that a negative power makes that a fraction, so that becomes 1 third. Now that we know that exponents can be rational, let's take a look at the rules of rational exponents. The good thing is, is that these rules are the same for just 
exponents that were whole numbers or integers. So if I have a to the m times a to the n, the rule is that we would just add the exponents. So my example here is if I have x to the one-half times x to the two-thirds, then to find that we would just go x to the one-half plus two-thirds. Well that's sure easier said than done. We're going to have to take the one-half plus the two-thirds, find a common denominator which is six, So we have 3 6 plus 4 6. So my exponent then would be x to the 7 6 power. You do not want to change these to mixed numbers. You want to keep them as improper fractions. Okay, to go along with this rule now, the x to the m over, or sorry, a to the n would be we subtract the powers. So if I have x to the one-fourth over x to the three-fifths, that becomes x to the one-fourth minus three-fifths. So we need to go one-fourth minus three-fifths and find a common denominator So the common denominator is 20. So I have 5 twentieths minus 12 twentieths is negative 7 twentieths. And since the power is negative, this ends up being 1 over x to the 7 twentieths. Sorry for that really messy work. We started out here, we went up to here, found the fraction, and then we got our actual answer. When you're adding and subtracting the powers, the two things are separate that are being combined into one, that's the hardest part because you have to find common denominators. If I had a to the m to the nth power, in this case we would multiply the powers. So here if I had y to the negative two-thirds all to the one-fourth power. We're just going to go through and multiply those powers. So it'd be y to the negative two-thirds times one-fourth and we can simplify that by canceling the two and the four and we end up with y to the negative one-sixth, which we don't want to keep negative fractions, or negative exponents, sorry, so it becomes y to the one-sixth power. Okay, the last rule let's take a look at is if I have a to the m, b to the nth, all to the r power, we will distribute that r through to each of the groups. So we would have a to the mr times b to the nr. So let's take a look at an example here. If I have 125 x to the ninth, y to the sixth, all to the one-third power. I'm going to take that one-third power and carry it through to each of those. So we would end up with 125 to the one-third power, x to the ninth times one-third, because if they're exponents you multiply them, y to the sixth times one-third. Now, 125 to the one-third power means the cube root of 125. All right, so our 125 would be three, x to the ninth, times one-third is x to the third, and six times one-third is two, so we would have y squared. Sorry, I almost wrote that wrong. And that would be our final answer. 
So rational exponents will work with variables. They will also work if you have constants instead of variables. Um, we, let's take a look at how we would actually simplify some more rational expressions. So let's say I wanted to simplify the eighth root of x squared. Well, we can use the fact that that eighth root is the same as the one-eighth power. We can distribute that through two times one-eighth is one-fourth. And then we can rewrite that one-fourth back into a radical. So with the index of four. So we have the fourth root of x. And because it's just x because we just have a one here. It's x to the first. All right, let's take a look at another one. Let's say I have the fifth root of x to the tenth, y to the fifteenth, and I need to simplify this. That y looks an awful lot like an x. There we go. So this is x to the tenth, y to the fifteenth, all to the one-fifth power, and let's go distribute that one-fifth through. So ten times one-fifth is 2, 15 times 1 fifth is 3. So my final answer would just simplify to x squared y cubed. All right, let's say I have the fourth root of x squared y to the sixth. Well, we end up with x squared y to the sixth all to the one-fourth power. Two times one-fourth is x to the one-half. y to the sixth, six times one-fourth is six-fourths or three-halves. And since both of those are a, have a half in the denominator, we can say then we have the square root of x to the first, y to the third. And that would be our final answer with that. Okay, this last one is kind of a crazy one. Let's say I have the fifth root of the square root of x. Well, we really have the fifth root of x to the one-half power or x to the one-half power to the one-fifth power. And if I want to go one-half times one-fifth, that is x to the one-tenth, or the tenth root of x. So we can simplify expressions that are even a little bit harder by taking them into their fractions and then going back, or simplifying that, and then going back to the radicals. That is it for rational exponents.